how's it going do this all first? Today I'm going to show you how you can properly diagnose a bad fuel pump. Now some of you may know a bad fuel pump could cause a crank but a no start condition. So it's very crucial that you know exactly how to diagnose a bad fuel pump. Alright, first step is going to be to get your key in the ignition, turn it to the on position and then to listen for the fuel pump. And when you do this, usually you can hear the pump while sitting in the car. But if you're unsure or can't hear anything, you can always have someone put it in the on position inside the car and then get back here, remove the gas cap, and try to listen for it through the gas filler. And what you're listening for is a low-pitched humming sound that goes on for a few seconds. And that's basically the sound of your fuel pump priming. When you put the key in the on position, it primes the fuel pump. In other words, the fuel pump makes sure there's adequate pressure in the fuel line from your gas tank all the way to your fuel injectors. Now if you have a working fuel pump, you should be able to hear it on most cars, but sometimes they're just too silent and you have a hard time hearing it, even at the gas cap. And that's where this guy comes in, a fuel pressure test kit. And these guys are really cheap. You can get these kits for under 30 bucks at Harbor Freight or AutoZone and whatnot. And they come with a gauge like this that tells you exactly how many PSI of, uh, pressure you have in your fuel line and different fittings and adapters that should work on most cars. And on most new cars, you're gonna have a fitting with a Schrader valve inside that you can hook this on to basically just screw this on there they're usually easy to spot but some older cars like this 95 Toyota Camry doesn't come with that fitting and if that's the case you can just simply first locate your fuel filter which for us is going to be this guy right here and then you want to locate the fuel supply line that's the line that takes the fuel from your fuel filter to your fuel ray and next you want to put a bunch of rags all around it and next you don't want to completely remove that bolt so you want to just loosen it almost all the way and then pull the fuel pressure line out a little bit and then have someone get in the car, put the key in the on position and then if you have fuel pressure, you're going to see that fuel pressure come out of the fuel filter. Now if you have any pressure coming out of that fuel filter, then it's unlikely the fuel pump is the cause of your no start. But if you need to know the exact pressure in your fuel line, then you need to find an assortment of these fittings that hopefully came with your fuel pump and pressure tester kit and attach them on there, then attach your gauge and then you'll be able to find out exactly what's the pressure in the fuel line. As you go without saying, you want to do this on a cold engine, don't try to start your car while that bolt is loose and also have a fire extinguisher ready just in case. Alright, so let's say you find out there's no fuel pressure in the system. What you want to do next is to make sure your fuel pump is actually receiving both power and ground. So what you want to do next is to find your relay and the fuse for your fuel pump which is usually located in the fuse box inside your engine bay and if you're lucky you'll have a little diagram on the cover that'll tell you exactly which one is the fuel pump and relay so on this car here's our fuel pump relay and this is our fuel pump fuse so first you want to remove the fuse and then look at it very closely and make sure that it's completely intact Next it's time to check this relay. Now you can swap other relays in for this, but they have to be the same exact relay and also have to control something that's not related to your ignition or fuel system. Also that relay needs to be for a system that you can check and make sure it's working properly, like your wipers or maybe your horn. And if you don't have another relay that you can swap in for this, you can always test this relay. And I've done a video showing you exactly how you can do this, and I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen, and also in the description box. And in that video, I show you how you can test uh, any three, four, or five pin relays without a diagram using a basic multimeter. All right, so after we check the fuse and relay, it's time to go over to the fuel pump and make sure we have power and ground there. And on most passenger vehicles, you can access the fuel pump through the bottom of your trunk or by removing the bottom cushion of your real seats. Now on this car, we'll also need to remove this top cover by first removing these three Phillips head screws. There we go. And here's a look at our connector. Now if your uh, fuel level sending unit comes as part of your fuel pump assembly, you're gonna have a five pin connector right here. Three of these are gonna be for your uh, fuel level sending unit. The other two are gonna be for your power and ground for your fuel pump. So you'll need to look into your repair manual and find out which two wires are those. Next, you wanna grab your multimeter and set it to DC voltage. And then ground your black test lead. And then you wanna make sure you turn the key to the on position once again. And then with your red test lead, you wanna to touch the pin on this connector that's for the power wire for your fuel pump. And as you can see, we got about 12 volts here. Next, after verifying you have power, you wanna check the ground wire. So you get your black test lead, put it on the pin for the ground, and you can use the red test lead on the pin that you verify that you have power to see if you get a reading, and we do, so we verify that we're both getting power and ground here. Now here's something very important you need to pay attention to, and that is on a lot of cars, especially the newer ones, you only get 12 volts here in the first few seconds that you turn the key to the on position, and that's the time that you hear the fuel pump running as we talked about earlier. 
and it does it as a safety measure so that fuel is not circulating at all times through your fuel system just in case you're in an accident. So you want to make sure you measure that voltage immediately after you turn the key to the on position because otherwise after that your car's computer is either going to shut that voltage off or lower the voltage to something that might make you think you have an electrical problem and send you in the wrong direction. Now I'm just going to take a guess and say it could potentially do the same thing on the ground wire so you want to keep that in mind while testing for ground as well. Now before I wrap this up I want to mention that just because you hear the fuel pump running it doesn't mean it's a good fuel pump and that you need to make sure that there's fuel pressure in the system as was the case with this fuel pump out of a 2004 Ford Ranger. And that's it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more like it. But also check out these other related videos. I'll put it on this side of the screen, also in the description box. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.